everyone so thanks so much for all the fantastic comments on our diy gravel driveway today is actually about how i laid these patio slabs for the front door so keep on watching if you want to see how i did it so first of all, these slabs are actually from B&Q and I bought six which worked out about 36 quid and to be honest I bought them on a whim because I liked them. You could probably get them cheaper elsewhere but here I'm doing a dry lay just to get an idea of what position I want them. But what we ended up preferring were two rows of three dead central to the door. Just ignore that black mark, it's just from storing it. But notice they're proud at the minute and we wanted them to blend in a bit and less of a trip hazard. But my first hurdle was my gate post because I wanted them to be sat against the house. And don't worry, these aren't cemented into the ground, they're fixed to the brick wall. So I probably didn't have the best tool for this and I used a tenon saw, a cheap tenon saw, just to trim the bottom off and then just removed it. But because I didn't want it to soak up any moisture when it rained, I treated it with a preserver. Then because I wanted the slabs to be central to the door, I needed to measure out where halfway was, made a little pencil marking knowing I'd wash it off later, and did the same with the lip on the door. But for good measure, while they were laid out, I made some markings as well on the bricks, so I could just place my builder square later and line them up, a little bit like a plumb line. So then I moved the slabs because I needed to remove that top layer of gravel, but I placed my builder square just to get a visual of where I needed to remove it, and raked away the gravel, but stopped where the sub base was. And because we only had one higher day left of this plate compactor, I thought, why not use it? And now it's time to get messy with some mortar. So I'm popping on my goggles, my face mask, and some waterproof gloves so I don't burn myself with the cement. And I found several places online that recommended doing six part sand, one part cement. I thought this was quite a large amount of sand. So if you've got your favorite mix, please comment below to help others. I've since seen other things contradicting this, but my slabs are sturdy, so I'm very happy. So I mixed that in my wheelbarrow using a shovel until it had all blended in then made a well in the centre and poured a little bit of water at a time and then mixed it, rather than adding too much and it being sloppy. So I try to go for a porridge consistency. It's not as daunting as it might seem anyway. Oh, and notice I placed it on a rag as well, just in case. Now, the mix that you've just seen me make, I only use that per slab. And I didn't think I'd need that much, but I did. So later on, I will double it. But I quite like doing it in parts to start off with to get to grips of what kind of texture that I liked. And I started off with a centre slab, just shoved it on the sub base. Bear in mind there's weed control under this as well if you haven't seen any of my gravel DIY videos. And then placed my slab on top and using a mallet and a spirit level, I made sure it was level from left to right and started malleting it in the centre so any mortar would spread around. But holding the spirit level sideways, I made sure that the slabs had a two to three mil slope, which meant my spirit level bubble was just off, because if it rained, it should just fall straight off. Well, that's how I did it anyway, because I didn't want rain to sit on it, and I didn't want it to run towards the house. So here I'm making my next batch of mortar, but doubled it to save time. So now that I know my centre slab is dead centre, I worked on the right slab. Now any slab after the first one, I find much easier. That first one dictates where the rest of the slabs are going to go. So as before, I shovel the mortar on, place the slab on top, pop my builder square there, just to make sure I was definitely in line, and malleted it down. And then use my spirit level to make sure it matched the other one, and that it was level. And I also found I had quite a bit of time, so I didn't have to worry about it going off quickly. And that's a problem I thought I'd have if I did my back garden patio this way as well. And I also scraped along the back to remove any pieces of gravel, just in case they got in the way of making sure my slab was in line with the rest. So I started quite late afternoon on this project, so it quickly turned dark on my last row. But thank goodness for head torches. But it's probably a better idea doing this in the daylight, in case you spot any problems sooner rather than later. But I wasn't so bothered because I only had three left. So again, repeated the same method, malleted them down, made sure they were level. Nice and easy. Oh, and make sure if you get any mortar on your slabs, remove them as quickly as possible because you don't want to stain them. I had to do a little bit of scrubbing the next morning. So it's now been almost two days since I've laid the slabs and 
we didn't walk on it for the first 24 hours but it's feeling very firm so I'm happy with the six parts uh, sand and one part cement so now I'm going to point them and finish it off Gosh. leave it boy so then onto the final job and that's pointing in between the slabs and the idea is to give them more stability. So I used a very small trowel and I just scraped in between the gaps just in case any little bits of stone or something had fallen in. And then for the pointing mortar, I was gonna use some building sand, but my father-in-law said it was fine to use silver sand that was in my shed. And it's a lighter color. It's a little bit dearer, but we had it anyway. So for this, I used four trowelfuls of the silver sand and chucked it in a bucket. In fact, I didn't need any more than this. And then one trowelful of cement again using a mask and gloves and then mix that together until it's all blended and because I didn't want the mixture to be too wet I just placed my trowel in a bucket of water twice and just let the drips run off into my mortar mixture and then gave it a final thorough mix Apparently the wetter the mixture the more likely it is going to stain your slabs but I will leave the video that I followed below by somebody called Random Chris and it was very useful. So I just sprinkled a trowel full of the mortar onto the gaps and just moved it side to side over it and then kept pushing it down with my trowel and then kept cramming it full until I got to the top. It's quite a tedious job this actually, so you might want to listen to some music at the same time. But once I've brought the height of the mortar to be flush with the slabs, I then used the end of a Sharpie pen just to go over it. But I did actually find that using the end of this trowel was fine for that as well. And once I'd done most of the gaps, I was a little bit worried about staining them, so I rubbed around the gaps, not in the gaps, with an old rag, just to remove the excess, just in case. I think I would have been fine though. But although I didn't show it, I also filled the gaps between the house and the slabs as well. And then just left it to dry. And then I finished it off with my new 999 doormat from b and Oh, and just in case you were wondering, I didn't have hands around while I was dealing with any kind of cement because I didn't want to burn his paws. So all in all, I think this job cost about 45 quid. I know it was 36 quid for the slabs from B&Q. You could probably get them cheaper elsewhere. And uh, a bit more for the cement and sand. So if you do it anything differently, because I've never done this before, apart from patio slabs with, um, with sand, then feel free to comment below. Um, I've done this now, so I might not need to do it again. But if you can help any future viewers, then fantastic. And uh, yeah, if you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And hopefully... I'll see you in my next one. Thanks. Bye. Here's a list of malformations. One cuts one hundred dollars for alterations. We all know that depressed leather is in. But you can't keep warming the winter in the midst of it. It's pretty ticky. With a safety pin. Jennifer's jacket. Jennifer's jacket. Jennifer's jacket. It's falling apart.